One of the most popular episodes we've ever done on this show is my 10 pro-life answers to pro-choice questions breakdown, peep episode 248. Afterwards, you guys still wanted more answers. So today I'm going to do just that. 10 more pro-life answers to pro-choice questions. I'm Alex Clark and this is Poplitics. Question one, shouldn't abortion be acceptable if the baby isn't viable to survive on its own? First of all, you should know that the point of viability completely changes depending on technology, not the unborn baby. So it's hard to tell where we'll be at in a few years. Maybe babies will be viable at conception. The other thing is you do realize a lot of people born are not viable, right? Newborn babies are not viable. They can't feed themselves or take care of themselves. NICU babies can't survive on their own. Toddlers can't survive on their own shoe. A lot of elderly people can't survive on their own. Not to mention people who are physically or mentally ill. A lot of them absolutely cannot take care of themselves without someone intervening to help them. So are they just not worthy of life? If viability is the argument, why shouldn't we kill all dependent individuals? A person's helplessness or dependency should motivate us to protect them, not destroy them. Question two, if you're against the surgical procedure of abortion, is there a compromise to be made and at least giving women the option of taking the abortion pill? I think I should explain to those who may not know what an abortion pill actually is, what it is, because there are some misunderstandings. Mifeprex, AKA the abortion pill, is a chemical that you ingest and it's different than the morning after pill. It was introduced to Americans in 2000 and according to the FDA, has killed 24 women since and 4,200 other women have become victims of life-threatening events, including ectopic pregnancies, blood transfusions, hospitalizations, and infections. Despite what pro-choice advocates want you to believe, it is anything but safe. And because of COVID, Planned Parenthood is promoting the abortion pill now more than ever too, because they say it's easy and can be done at home. But how easy is it really? Well, you will be experiencing excruciating, cramping, bleeding, headaches, vomiting, nausea, and contractions for hours and sometimes even days that basically feels like the worst diarrhea you've ever had times 10. But don't worry, according to Planned Parenthood, that's completely normal. Yikes. It's important for you to know that taking the abortion pill is still having an abortion. It's just a different method in how the killing is done. The abortion pill kills with poison, a surgical abortion kills with suction, forceps, and Scissors. If someone you know is murdered, does it matter if they were killed because they were dismembered or poisoned? No, what matters is somebody died no matter how it was done. Because an innocent life is still being lost, no, there is no compromise on the abortion pill. However, there is really good news. There's an abortion reversal pill that you or someone you love can take if they change their mind and feel like they've made a mistake. If you need the abortion reversal pill, call the abortion pill reversal helpline, 1-877-877. 5580333. You might still be pregnant and it might not be too late. Question three, how can you be pro-life and pro-death penalty? You know, not all pro-life people are for capital punishment. I know pro-life people who feel both ways. I also know a lot of conservatives for that matter who are both anti and pro-capital punishment. There are really strong arguments for both sides and I encourage you to listen and read in-depth conversations from people arguing either point to decide where you personally stand. But ultimately, the death penalty is rooted in a respect for human life, not disrespect. Hear me out. The earliest examples of the death penalty are found in the Bible, Genesis chapter 9 to be exact, and its purpose was to be imposed in cases of murder only because life is so valuable to God that when someone deliberately takes it from another human being, they forfeit their own right to life. The idea of capital punishment actually affirms the pro-life stance that all innocent human lives deserve protection and justice should be carried out when they're not. It's not contradictory to be pro-life and anti-death penalty, but it is inconsistent to be anti-death penalty and pro-abortion. Only a hypocrite would say that a murderer should live, but an innocent child should be put to death. Question four, 
If Planned Parenthood is shut down, won't women go without other health care services they desperately need? Planned Parenthood loves to tell people abortions only amount to 3% of their services and that only 10% of women who come to see them get an abortion. But consider this, why then are abortion restrictions so detrimental to their business? Why does Planned Parenthood shut down clinics based solely on state restrictions on abortions? They don't shut down because of state restrictions on other things. If abortions really do do only represent just 3% of their services and women would die without them, why in the world would they not stay open then to provide the other supposed 97% of their services? In 2017, Planned Parenthood performed 321,384 abortions, which is over one third of all the abortions in the US. There is no denying the numbers. Planned Parenthood is the country's largest abortion provider, bar none. And for the question of where women would get their other healthcare needs met without Planned Parenthood, there are places called Federally Qualified Health Centers, or FQHCs, that don't provide abortions and primarily help low-income women. Across the US, there are 16 times more FQHCs than Planned Parenthood centers that serve eight times more clients. FQHCs offer families a wider range of services and a higher standard of care than Planned Parenthood. Federally qualified healthcare centers outnumber Planned Parenthood's 20 to one. In the state of California alone, which has the most Planned Parenthood locations in the country, there are only 114 Planned Parenthood clinics compared to over 1,600 FQHCs. The idea that women would have nowhere to go without Planned Parenthood is a lie so profound that only someone when desperate for money would make it up. By the way, Planned Parenthood clinics don't even provide mammograms even though they say they do. Women deserve great health care, but they're certainly not getting it at Planned Parenthood. Question five, in a pro-life world, if abortion is illegal, would women who miscarry go to jail? Absolutely not. No pro-lifer wants this or advocates for this, and anyone saying otherwise is lying to you to scare you. If abortion was made illegal, it would be doctors who perform abortions that would be prosecuted. Carrying out the procedure would be considered a felony with up to 99 years imprisonment. A miscarriage is completely different than an abortion. An abortion is the act of intentionally taking a human life. A miscarriage is a tragic, spontaneous loss of pregnancy from the body that you have absolutely no control over. Question six, should embryos that get discarded in IVF be considered abortion too? So the IVF topic in regards to the pro-life movement is extremely interesting and complex and a really compelling topic that I've been seriously thinking about and researching for the last year. My very best friend Lauren, who I talk about a lot on the show, is pregnant now with twin boys due to the blessing of IVF and her and her husband are using all of their embryos and not discarding any. If you believe life begins at conception, which I do and most pro-lifers do, then yes, I think destroying an embryo is ending a human life and morally indefensible. If all of the fertilized eggs that are developed are implanted, and if some of those end up being rejected naturally by a woman's body, that seems more like God's call to me and I don't see anything wrong with it. Question seven, aren't late-term abortions a non-issue because they're so rare? When someone says late-term abortion, what does that mean? It means a baby in the womb that is 20 weeks or older. Right now, you can get a late-term abortion with no state imposed threshold in Alaska, Colorado, Washington, D.C., New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, Oregon, and Vermont. Abortions at 20 weeks or later make up for about 1.3% of abortions in a given year, which is still a lot of babies. And New Jersey and New Hampshire aren't even required to report their abortion numbers, so more than likely, these stats are actually a lot higher. Not to mention all the states that say a late-term abortion is okay when medically necessary. The thing is, an abortion is never medically necessary. If you missed the answer to that question, make sure you go back and watch the first pro-life video I did. Question eight. I agree with making abortion illegal in the second or third trimesters, but a two inch blob in the first trimester is not a person. So what's the big deal? If size is the determining factor in whether or not someone deserves to live, does that mean that I am more expendable than an NBA player? Is someone who loses a significant amount of weight in their life now worth less than when they were bigger? No, because that's stupid. It makes no sense at all. Skills or traits don't determine our humanity and your size is absolutely not evidence to indicate that you're not a human being. If a fetus in the womb isn't a human being, 
What is it? And if your argument is that it's something else in the womb, but outside of the womb it is suddenly a human being, that's scientifically impossible. What makes a human a human is that he comes from two humans. Just like what makes a cat a cat is that it comes from two cats. If you come from human beings, have unique DNA, and are alive and growing, then under the Constitution you are a person who deserves rights and equal protection. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want to repeal the Hyde Amendment, which means our tax dollars would go directly towards funding abortions. What would it mean? to defund Planned Parenthood. Defunding Planned Parenthood means to stop giving them our taxpayer dollars to use for funding abortions. The Hyde Amendment is one of the most critical life-saving initiatives in U.S. history. For the record, Joe Biden supported the Hyde Amendment as recently as 2019, but then he wanted to run for president and the radical left controls him because he's a Muppet with hardly any cognitive abilities left. Well, a few days ago, his press secretary, Jen Psaki, was asked about it and all she said was, he's a devout Catholic, which isn't even an answer. Americans deserve to know where our taxpayer dollars are going. I shouldn't be forced to pay for abortions because I don't agree with them. Just like I don't think someone's taxpayer dollars should go to the NRA if they're anti-gun. Question. Isn't it mostly men that are pro-life? Most women support abortion. This is just ignorant. If you're being challenged on this, they really have no clue what they're talking about. More women than men oppose abortion in the United States, for one. And two, it is women who make up the pro-life movement by a landslide. The largest pro-life movement in America is the National Right to Life, and two-thirds of their members are women. The National Office of Care Net, which is a network of pregnancy resource centers, estimate that 80 to 90 percent of their workers are women. Watch YouTube videos of past marches for life. Does it look like mostly men in the crowd or women. P.S. If your argument is that men shouldn't be allowed to have an opinion on abortion because they don't have a uterus, then they should be disqualified whether they're pro-choice or pro-life. Answer this for me too. If that's the standard, why do pro-choice groups give massive donations to pro-choice men running for office? The truth is, people don't actually care if someone has a uterus or not. They just care about how they'll vote. And if it isn't in your favor, you want to exclude them. Okay, that's got to be all the abortion questions in the world that I've answered, right? I'm just kidding. There are so many great questions when it comes to abortion. If you think of more that I haven't answered in the first video or this video, let me know in the comments what they are and maybe I'll make a third. Like this episode so it shows up in people's feeds, DM it to three friends who are pro-choice and save this episode so you can go back to it later when someone asks you about what pro-lifers believe. Our main home is right here on Instagram, but you can subscribe to Politics on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Please leave us a five-star review. I'm Alex Clark and this is Politics. Click below to watch yesterday's episode. Please subscribe, thumbs up, share this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss the conservatee. And make sure you're following this show at Poplitics on Instagram for even more conservative content.